Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Wade, and today I'm going to clear up a common point of confusion for beginning After Effects users. We're gonna talk about the difference between viewport zooming and viewport scaling. In this video, you'll learn the difference between scaling and zooming, how scaling and zooming affect vectors like imported Illustrator artwork or shape layers, viewport limitations in After Effects, and shortcut keys to speed up your workflow. Okay, in After Effects, I've got two composition windows side by side. The left side composition and the left side timeline are a bitmap PNG image, right? Bitmaps are made up of pixels. We all know this, or most of us know this. If, it, if you're new to this stuff, like brand new, basically bitmaps are made up of pixels and vectors are made up of a set of instructions and points for points and where to draw lines and curves and so on. So vectors are resolution independent and bitmaps are not. So if I zoom in on this bitmap on the left, or let's say if I scale this bitmap on the left, I'm gonna hit the S key and let's scale it to, let's try 800%. And now we see the stem, it's quite pixelated. It's not looking good at all. We can basically see this is not smooth, right? But if I go to this vector version, which I've imported from Adobe Illustrator, and you, know, you can see that this is all basically a shape layer. So everything in here is fills and paths. It's all vector based. So now if I grab this one and I hit S and I scale this to the same percentage, it's perfectly smooth, right? This is what we expect. But sometimes you're looking at a vector and you're thinking, oh my gosh, my vector is pixelated. What's going on? Now, if you are looking at a vector and it is looking pixelated in the viewport and your viewport is at 100%, you're 100% sure that it's 100%, there is one other way that can happen. So this is a vector shape layer. This is a text layer. These both have this little star icon here, right? Now, this is the collapse transformations and continuously rasterize button. Now, what continuously rasterize means is that After Effects is going to continuously rasterize this thing rather than just doing it once when you start working with the comp. It's going to do that continuously. So if you scale up and down, it's going to continuously update basically the resolution of that vector. Now, if we go back to 100% and we pre-comp this, and let's just call this plant pre-comp, now, if I hit that S key and I start scaling this to 800%, it's looking pixelated. And the reason is because that continuously rasterize button, it is checked by default when you import a shape layer or you add a text layer or you add a shape, but it is not when you do a pre-comp. So if I check that, it fixes the problem. So that is the first place to check. Now, let's take a look at the difference between zooming and scaling. So I have scaled these and they look great. Let's go back to 100% for both of them. Okay, so now these look exactly the same, right? Because they are both at 100% and this one is not pixelated at all because it's at its native resolution. This one is not pixelated at all because it's a vector. But now I'm gonna zoom in to, let's try 800%. And that looks pixelated, okay, and 800%. Oh no, my vector's pixelated too. What am I gonna do? What's happening here? So what you're doing here when you hit these buttons or you hit control plus or command plus or minus to zoom in and out, right? Going like this, in and in. What you're doing there is you are changing the magnification control, right? Of how you're viewing this. So no matter what you set your quality to, right now mine is set to full quality, right? So this should be full quality. And if it's a vector at 800%, you'd think, oh gosh, it shouldn't be scaled. Zooming is changing the magnification ratio and After Effects actually renders those vector objects before zooming, which is basically just scaling the object for preview. So After Effects renders the vector and then when you preview it, it scales that render up. So you're not seeing that perfectly smooth vector and the reason is because of the way After Effects renders zooming. So if you see this in your own work and you're a new After Effects user, or maybe you're a pro like me and you just forgot, 
This is likely the problem. Just check this magnification here, take that back to 100%. And if you scale your vector up, I assure you it will look lovely. And even if you're zoomed into 800% here looking at this, it looks bad, but it's actually a vector. It's gonna look fine if you render it at 100%, even if you scale this up, to, let's see, 800%. And let's scale this one to 800. So now we're seeing 800% zoomed and scaled, right? They both look pretty bad. The vector actually looks slightly better, but um, slightly cleaner at any rate. Um, okay, so, but if you were to render both of these files, your vector is going to render perfectly scaled to 800%, even though it looks bad zoomed to 800%, because again, if I go back to 100%, looks perfect, right? If I go back to 100% on this bitmap, does not look perfect. So this 100% preview is what your render is going to look like. So you see a vector that looks pixelated in your viewport, don't panic, check this number right here and that should get you sorted. While we're here, let's talk about some handy shortcuts you can use in the viewport. So if you wanna scale in and out, but you don't want to use this little gadget right here, you can actually use the comma key and the period key to zoom from the center of the viewport. So I'm using the comma and that is zooming out and the period is going to zoom in. Now again, I'm zooming, so things look a little pixelated, that's okay. So that is a handy dandy shortcut. So say you get really zoomed in or really zoomed out and or things are off center because you've use that space bar to sort of pan around and you want to get that centered back just the way this bitmap one is on the left, you can actually hit the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and the forward slash button. And that is going to center that up just perfectly in the middle of your view. Those are probably my most used shortcuts, but there are a couple more shortcuts we can talk about today. Now, this happened to work out to be 100% when I hit the Alt key and the forward slash key. But what if my window's bigger and I want this to go as big as it possibly can? Well, I can use the Shift key and the forward slash to do that. So Alt or Option forward slash will get it to 100% and Shift forward slash we'll get it to the maximum size that will fit in this window. Now let's talk a little bit about what all this stuff here does in the viewport, right? So we already learned about the magnification tool. And again, you can do this by selecting here. You can use the control plus and control minus. You can use the period key and the comma key as well. Um, or again, you can just use these fit up to 100% or fit or you know whatever you want to select from this menu. Now here next to this, we have some different choices. We can choose auto, full, half, third, quarter, or custom. Now what this does is auto basically lets After Effects say, I'm feeling good today, I have a lot of processing power, I'm gonna choose full resolution. Or maybe you've got a lot of windows open in Chrome or you've got a lot of other apps running and After Effects might say, you know what? I'm running a little slow right now, I'm gonna auto set myself to half or maybe quarter. Or you can do that yourself. If you're working on a very heavy file and you just want your previews to be faster, you can choose half, you can choose third, you can even choose quarter or you can pick a custom amount and then type that in. And basically when you do this, and you can see that in that custom resolution dialogue that came up, you're telling After Effects, when you're previewing, only render every four pixels. You could even say only render every eight pixels and every eight pixels vertically. And that's gonna give you, you know, it's not a great preview, but again, this is just the preview. When you render, it's going to look like it would look at full resolution. I do this frequently. I will work in half or third or even quarter. If I've got a file with a lot of particle effects or just a lot of shape layers, a lot of expressions, basically anytime After Effects starts to slow down your previews, you can speed that up by going into this menu and just downgrading your visual a little bit. You can't always do that. Sometimes you need that visual precision to work, but sometimes you can get away with half or even third or quarter. 
Okay, what is next? This is the preview quality, okay? So what we can do here is we can enable or disable fast previews, right? So off means what you're seeing in this window is the final quality and After Effects is gonna do its best to render that in preview mode using as much RAM as it can possibly use based on how much RAM you have available. The next one we have is adaptive resolution, right? So long story short, after Effects is going to downsample the footage and whatnot. Basically, it's going to kind of change the resolution of things uh, to be a little bit less pretty, but it's going to, again, help things to speed up as you work. Next, we've got this wireframe mode, which is actually, it's good for just kind of setting things up, right? So I can't see anything because this was just one shape layer. But if I had a bunch of different layers in here with a bunch of different things, I would see outlines just like this. Right now I'm seeing one outline for the houseplant layer and one for the text that says vector plant. So that can be really useful if you've got a ton of stuff to set up and arrange and you don't wanna actually wait for After Effects to catch up to what you're doing. So you can also, again, click this preferences and you can set all of that up however you want to in your own After Effects preferences. You can again set like your default adaptive resolution, all these different things. We're not gonna go into all this um, detail. This is a little bit beyond the, the beginner tutorial, but for now you should be able to work with what you know about just this enabling. Uh, or disabling, or again, doing to wireframe. So I'm gonna turn that off, oh, just so you can see what adaptive resolution looks like. Not much different with this one, but if I started animating stuff, we might see a difference there. Let's turn that back off. Okay, we've got some more buttons to go over, but these are going to be pretty quick. So this one toggles the transparency grid. You can't see it because I don't have anything in there, but if I move this over, I've got a transparency grid now. If I turn that off, this is my composition background color. As many of you know, your composition background color is a setting in the composition. It is not an actual object. So if you send this to Media Encoder to render, it's not going to render this background color of blue. It's just going to actually render a transparency or black if you're rendering to uh, some an image format or a video format that does not have transparency. So. Keeping this actually toggled on is a great way to see where you need to add stuff, right? If you're working on something and your background, all of a sudden your render looks completely different, it's got a weird black background that you didn't put there, probably you're seeing your composition background and not realizing that you didn't have an actual background. The other thing that can get a little bit confusing, especially if you are brand new, is this next button which basically turns on and off your layer controls. So if I were to, actually the title of it is Toggle Mask and Shape Path Visibility. But if I were to, let's say, draw a bunch of stuff like that, and then I turn this off, now I can't see any of that stuff, right? Like I drew a thing, I'm selecting a thing, but I can't see any of those points anymore. And that's a little bit confusing, right? You know, if you're not seeing your handles and stuff like that, turn that back on and there, now I can see the points, now I can see the handles. If you have animation, you would see the motion path. So let's undo that ugly shape that we made and get back to normal. And see, now I can even see the points in this, right? But if I turn this off, none of that shows up. All I see are these corner points. So if you're missing things in your viewport that you and you don't know what you did, you might have accidentally hit this button right here. Another thing that comes up, especially for beginners, is you could accidentally hit this region of interest button and then all of a sudden your cursor looks like this little kind of plus sign and all you can do is grab stuff, right? Not ideal. What this is used for is actually, say I wanted to use this plant, but I didn't want that whole composition anymore. I can use this button here to select a region of interest and then I can go to the composition menu and say, crop the comp to the region of interest. And if I do that, then my comp is no longer, I think this is 1080 wide by 1080 tall. It's no longer that wide. It's only as wide as this region of interest. I'm gonna turn that off though, because I actually want the whole comp. So if you see that plus sign and you can't do anything else, that's probably what's going on. Just uncheck that button. Um, grid and guide options. Again, you can set your grid to be on. You can set your rulers to be on. This is useful for dragging guides in and out. Let's say I want a guide for 
the edge of the pot, right? I can just grab one here. And let's say I want to guide for the top of the pot, just drag one down from up here. There are also some shortcut keys that are very handy for turning these guides and grids on and off. If I want to toggle these rulers on and off, I can do that by hitting Control R. They go off, hit it again, they come back. Just toggles infinitely. If I want these grid to go off or on, that's Control and the button is the apostrophe um, or Command. If you're on a Mac, this is going to be Command apostrophe or Command R. Let's say I want those guides to turn off. That's going to be Control or Command plus the semicolon. Now everything is off. What if I want to see what my safe zones are, right? The title safe zone. I can just hit that apostrophe key by itself and that's going to show me that, okay, whatever I'm viewing this on, like a television or different monitors that crop things, different resolutions, this area in the middle is the safe zone, right? So that's what I'm viewing here when I use that shortcut key. And if you wanted to get to that on and off without using the shortcut key, you can do all of that stuff right here. Title action safe, proportional grid, the shortcut key for turning that proportional grid on and off is alt plus the uh, apostrophe key. So that's the proportional grid, right? And the regular grid again is the control plus that. In this case, they're the same, but they're not always the same. So that's how you get to all that stuff here. We've got some color stuff over here. Basically, this is just how you want to view it. I just want to view the greens. Just want to view the alpha. There's no alpha in this to view. Everything's got a shape over it. I'm going to just leave this in RGB, but you can dig into that if you need to and you just want to see, oh, just what do I have that's in the blue range? Um, that's kind of stuff is helpful if you get into compositing and um, all of that visual effects type of workflow stuff. Okay, resetting the exposure. So you can adjust this in After Effects to act like different exposure levels, right? Like different light exposure levels like you would have in a camera. Minus 12 is obviously too far. Minus two is gonna make it darker. Basically you go higher, it's gonna make it brighter um, as if you were opening the camera lens or setting an f-stop. If you accidentally type something in there, your image looks a little bit weird like this one does, you can reset that exposure by hitting that button right there. I hope that these tips are helpful and I hope they've cleared up some questions for those of you who are new to using all of these complicated viewport tools and After Effects. And for those of you that maybe aren't new and like me, just um, never explored all of these tools for one reason or another. That's it. Pretty simple, right? Next time the pixelation gremlin strikes, you'll know what to do. Hit subscribe if you want more tips like this one, and be sure to download the handy PDF that includes all of the shortcut keys that we discussed today, and then some. If you want to learn more about After Effects with the help of industry pros, check out After Effects Kickstart from School of Motion. If you want to learn how to make vector artwork like that we used in this example today, check out Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed, also from School of Motion. That's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye!